What is B? Today, what is B? today I he have me what is B Frederick. Was, so I told him, is B? B is not a hard game. What is B? Art. It's jazz. Art. Art. What is crying out on a night of blue stars? Heart. And he is in Sweden. And he uh, is a musician. He's um, a designer. He's an artist. He he does all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Tell me about yourself, Frederick. Uh, I'm a kind of a multiplist. Uh, I use different kind uh, of uh, expression and techni technical expression. But first, I want to say hello, Debbie, and thank you very much to inviting me at the Beat Poetry Foundation. And uh, I'm very pleased and very proud to be part of your project. And now I've been working several years now with many different production of video and music. And um, I, well, I love poetry. I just, uh, just so everybody knows, uh, I made Frederick uh, a collaborator and, you know, with the National Beat Poetry Foundation because he works with all the beat poets. Yeah, uh, I'm not a po poet myself, but uh, maybe I am. Uh, through my pictures and my sounds, there is kind of poetry through it. And, uh, and uh, it began a oh, very long time ago, in fact, uh, my interest of collaboration with poets. Uh, uh, do, about 30 years ago, or a bit more, I met Lifi Fitladi from South Africa, and uh, we was playing music, and he, 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 he told his uh, poetry. And then at this time, uh, um, uh, Ben Tobiokun was student at Harvey Krupa studio. So there was several poets over there, musician and everything. And, and we improvise it, we have fun, and it was very nice. And it's 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 about thirty years after I decided uh, to 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 produce all this thing because I, I thought wow why why people can miss it maybe it's not a big uh, hundred thousand or five hundred thousand in the public people in the public but uh, it's worth to to listen to it and to hear it and to contribute to the expansion and understanding of poetry. Uh, even if you can't read it in a book, you can listen to it. And, uh, and if you don't want only to listen to words or, or texts, uh, maybe some music make it more easy to, to, to hear it. Do you find that the uh, poets, I mean, when you are working with the poets, do you um, go along with their rhythm or do you create a rhythm and they go along with your music. Uh, but that I was very surprised when I was uh, experimenting with my music and the text and everything. And, and then suddenly I discovered there was a rhythm in the poetry. I say, ah, chat, 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 the rhythm following the, in the poetry. So I catch it directly. There is a rhythm over there. And then I tried to, I found the rhythm, um, I, uh, experimenting with the rhythm and testing different kind of, uh, uh, instrument like congas or darbuka or drums or even guitar or bass or other things. And then suddenly I discover even the melody of the poetry because there is a rhythm, but there is also the melody. And I catch a melody, so I knew which note uh, it was and which tune the poetry have. And I believe all those poets was very pleased that I, 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 re I recognize those yes. aspects in the poetry besides the words which are very important and mean things so when you combine uh, the rhythm the melody and the uh, and the meaning of the uh, of the of the poetry when i mean i mean the meaning is uh, if it's something an aggression or if it's a love letter or if it's a st uh, state of mind or something like this so I can an ambient over there, and I use uh, their words and their voice. 
And uh, I, I found particularly interesting the voice of all the poets I've been working with. Uh, I can mention the list if you want. Or uh, um, Are they all different when they, in how they express themselves? Yes, yes, uh, there are different accents, for example, or uh, I'm very interested in accent. That's why I've been working as well with uh, poets from South Africa of, or even Australia, not only United States. And because I like the accent, we give uh, uh, identity at the, um, at the telling that it's very uh, personal and very proper to, to, to the cultural background they have each other. So I began at the beginning with, like I told you, Lee Fifi Tladi, Bengt Björklund. And then um, Bengt presented me to Chris Van Hoy, to Paul Richmond, and Dennis Renforsch, Rain Roberts, and, uh, and, then, and then came in other uh, poets like Rich Ferguson or uh, uh, Carlo Parcelli, or even... Um, Lately, uh, we have done several albums together after that. So the first, it was an experiment. And the second album, it was more uh, a collaboration. Now, did, did you always work with um, music or were you first an artist in another way, like drawing or painting? Yeah. I'm a painter. I'm a, a painter at the ground. Uh, it, and I've done about several thousand artworks and exhibited in several museums and art centers, uh, mostly in Europe, but even in Los Angeles. I show my work at the MoMA, for example, 1987, when my uncle, uh, Sidney Jan, is one of the biggest collector of contemporary art in uh, in United States, invited me to Los Angeles. And then he said, oh, I want to present you the, the director of the Modern Art Museum in Los Angeles. And then I came in Los Angeles and I show all my paintings in the uh, entree in the, of the museum. So all the, the floor was taken of my paintings. That's how I came 23 years old. Uh, in Los Angeles and presented me to the biggest galleries and art collectors in in United States. So this part of my life uh, is a part of American history for me too. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if I'm French and I've been living here in Sweden about uh, 20, 34 years, uh, I'm a Swedish citizen, I'm a French citizen, but somewhere in my mind, in my art, in, in my soul, um, I'm a part of American history through my uncle, but also through my father's uh, sisters. Uh, he had 12 sisters living in Las Vegas, San Diego, and Los Angeles. So I have yeah. a lot of aunts <laughs> over there. So I am very delighted, really, uh, to be part of Beat Poetry Foundation because of that too, it, it gives me a more, um, how you call it, uh, uh, legitimation to, to be part of the American uh, cultural uh, uh, events. Now, um, what type of music do you find is used the most when you're working with these poets? It depends a little bit about uh, uh, about the poetry itself. I try to illustrate a little bit to give some extra accent or uh, meanings in the poetry, which are uh, more of the sound. Uh, uh, no, is it more like toward jazz? Um, the style? The last thing is uh, Carlo Parcelli told me it was trans trans transgressive poetry or transgressive music. In fact, I use all the style. I can use uh, rock music, I can use jazz, I can use punk, I can use reggae, I use classical music too, and I mix everything like a ratatouille. Uh, yeah. ratatouille. And I mix everything. And suddenly I discover a new style and nobody really beside uh, Parcelli could find a, a proper name to, to, to my style of music. Well, 
Carlo Parcelli. Yeah. Um, he is he's very knowledgeable of a lot of things. So I'm not surprised that he would figure it out. <laughs> I, I was very, very pleased to work with him because I didn't know that somebody could write still this, this style again, like in 1700 or 1800, but in the modern, uh, and that's what I like to, to the mix, you know, from yeah. the historical point of view to the future and uh, future ideas and drones and uh, ambient music. So uh, it's not popular music, it's not, not at all popular. But I think it's part of a historical statement as, as well as uh, it's an expression of the day life in our life. And it did happen. It feels like this at this moment. Then uh, nobody can take it away. So it's there. Mm -hmm. It's a statement there. And then when I work with uh, Rich Ferguson, then I, I got very, very, very pleased because he is more funk more rock, more, uh, so it, it was very, very, very interesting. In fact, we are now doing a new album with Rich Ferguson, which will come very soon. Uh, and uh, it's called the uh, uh, Los Angeles Coyotes. Yeah, Rich Ferguson is the uh, Beat Poet Laureate of California. And um, he has a very distinctive voice. You could be anywhere and you know it's him if you hear his voice. Yeah. And he, his style of writing too is very uh, imp impressive because you, it's like a picture, you know, a picture with many details, you know, when you touch it, you're going there and there and you don't see the connection. At the end, you understand the whole connection. You have to, to read the whole text to, to understand the whole connection, but uh, it's very proper personal and uh, strong, very strong. Yeah, I, I find in his uh, poetry, it's, it's, he's so descriptive that you can envision the whole story uh, as he speaks. Yeah, like a picture. It's a picture, yeah. a collage or uh, something like this. It's uh, incredible and he used those words, I love them. Uh, he can express things very deeply and with, with, with kindness and everything. And uh, I, I, I enjoy it. So I'm very pleased to announce that the uh, uh, Los Angeles Coyotes, I'm not sure I tell it the right way, but uh, will come very soon. As well as uh, for not so long time ago, uh, I did this uh, album with uh, Carlo Pacelli too. For, it was not a long time ago. I've been very productive with all those poets. And uh, even Paul Richmond, uh, we did three tracks and videos on YouTube and uh, on the Beat uh, Poet uh, uh, Revisited uh, album also. That was about three years ago now, uh, when there was a Beat Poetry uh, Foundation Festival in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I discovered other poets like Lee Fifi Clady from South Africa, for example. Uh, Lee Fifi came to Sweden because he was friend with Nelson Mandela. Is a peacemakers, really peacemaker, great peacemakers, and artists. And we 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 have been doing two different albums. One with his own poetry. He told me he wrote a poetry about for uh, on a hundred meter paper. Go oh, well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 100 meter poetry on the paper. Uh, it never stopped. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and then he makes the proverbs, uh, his own proverbs, inspirative of South African tradition, but in a modern, modern way. And it was a discovery. First, the language, a local language from South Af African uh, uh, language, which are very, very special, you know, with the tongue. Oh, and, uh, and then he translated directly in English and it was great to, 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 to do something. So um, at the same, so old from, uh, from uh, tradition and at the same time, so far away in the future. Uh, yeah. And uh, of course, 
Uh, another poet I, I admire very much is uh, Jan Gibbins. And Jan Gibbins is uh, from Australia. Uh, he's an old professor uh, in anatomy and uh, uh, natural sciences in, at the university in Adelaide in Australia. But he's making also uh, uh, poetry videos too. Very good oh. quality. Uh, poetry video that have been shown in all the world those last months or years. It shows in everywhere in, in the world. And uh, we have done, he visit me also. That's what is interesting. They're all, mostly all those poets, they visit me in Stockholm, in my studio. They're recorded here. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? How you connect with people. Yeah. It was an attraction, very strong attraction that the, uh, Chris Vanoy was here, Paul Richmond was here, Bank was here, uh, Jan Gibbin was here, Lififi was here, uh, all of them, uh, <laughs> nearly. And uh, the, I, I believe that other other poet wanted to come here, but because of the of the corona and everything, it was making more difficult to come here and visit me in Stockholm. Yeah, I think they still have this in their mind. Um, especially Chris Van uh, Vanoy, who won't absolutely to come back. <laughs> but. Yeah, I'm going to be seeing uh, Chris Vanoy during the festival. He's going to be coming in from California. Yeah, I saw uh, <laughs> several, several <laughs> poets will be present. At the, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know all the poets you are working with. I, uh, I have also time to my creation too, so I do not have time to 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 to, to listen to everybody. But I've been listening to many, especially those last year's videos, for example. There have been. Uh, uh, oh. I'll have to hook you up with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, you, I know, I know one very good poet too. Uh, I think you know her very well too. Mm. That I am, I'm, I'm very I'm insisting to work with her. Um, she's dark hair, dark glass, glasses, and she's talking to me right now. Baby. She is, huh? I know a very good poet. That oh, I want to work oh me, <laughs> talking about me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I. I need to, I need to do something with you. Yeah. I, I'm trying I, to find the time. Yeah. I didn't catch if it was classical music or still uh, uh, music guitar, acoustic guitar and uh, natural flute, natural instruments or, or I, I, I didn't figure out really how it fits. It depends very much from the poetry you send me and we work on it. And also, but it's, some of my plans, yeah. I mean, I'm a challenge, is what you're telling me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems it will be a bit, bit romantic over there, I think. <laughs> and the other guy, Paul Richmond, is not much romantic, and Carlo is not much romantic. Igor Goldkind either is romantic, political, engaged, and everything. And I believe that. I have to to cool down with with some soft poetry, mm -hmm. maybe some somehow uh, to, to make a balance. And then I don't have. There is no women. There no, is no women that are interested. All the collaborations there was no no women. Some musicians have been women, but no no poets really. And. Uh, I've been criticizing. I say, oh, why there is only men? Uh, you produce only men. I said, no, I did not have the opportunity to to meet uh, women with uh, uh, strong poetry, with uh, special voice, and uh, open to experimental music too. Because it's a collaboration. Yeah. There is a sweat and there is a music. Uh, it's not only poetry; it's a mix. Mm -hmm. I'll have to hook you up with some women poets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> can be dangerous, but. <laughs> so, do you have anything to show me um, about what you know you've done? Um, yeah. With your artwork, maybe. Uh, but first, I want to show you again my diploma. <laughs> I'm very, very, very uh, proud about that. And I show all my friends and all my American friends, they got so jealous. 
<laughs> I'm not American, but I said, I am American in my heart. I'm American in my brain and I'm American through my father in my soul too. So well, you, you are now, you are now an affiliate of the National Beat Poetry Foundation and you know, you're welcome to connect with all our poets and uh, collaborate with them and, you know. But now I'm working with music, musician. Now, last album, next album is coming. It's another album with a, a, a trumpetist from Switzerland, from the university in Switzerland, Zoran and Gregory. Uh, both of them are uh, uh, a teacher at the university in, in Zurich, in Switzerland, and they wanted to work with me with a, a musical composition. So uh, uh, I try to. Well, even, even one of my. Um... Beat Laureates is the famous musician David Amram that uh -huh. worked with Jack Kerouac. Uh -oh. um, he is going to be coming to the festival oh, yeah. uh, this year. I will be pleased to, uh, to listen to his uh, music composition uh, and everything. But I, I'm a book editor too. I'm editing art books. Here is some of my publishing art books. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> we, how, do you, how do you edit uh, an art book? Uh, that's it's when I do exhibition, uh, I, I, I ask for funds. So uh, the French Institute or the Swedish Institute, they financing and some sponsor financing my art books uh, and then I produce them. Uh, they want their name, they want to be at the exhibition, they want to be mentioned in the media, and then uh, somehow I succeed to do it. So I did here uh, irrealization. Ir I said irrealization uh, edition, uh, like irrealist mm -hmm. art edition is my book uh, edition. And I'm joking a bit, irrealization. And mm. Igor Golkan wrote some very nice texts about that too. Uh, Igor Golkan told me, uh, wrote at uh, uh, irrealization. It's uh, the realization of, uh, it's an another reality. It's another reality, the, the uh, spiritual reality. It's influenced your, your, your way of living so much at, it's not only physical things happen, but things who happen in your head, no? it's important too. Mm -hmm. What's in uh, your inspiration, your intention, everything. It's everything in your head. It's not in the, in reality. That's why I mentioned Irrealist Art Edition. Here is on all the nice uh, books with pastels and, uh, oh, it's difficult to, to, to show everything. But if you go on my web page, show, you can you can see part of, of those books and you can order it too so oh, been, tell me your website tell me your website so people can it's look www. you up dot iriarte uh, like my name i r i a r t e dot info okay so, uh, so i've done Oh, several books, art books, photo books too. Oh, this is a bit <laughs> strange books. Uh, here's one book that uh, uh, Bengto Berklund wrote some poetry in it. So I, I make photo books with poetry too, about uh, cans or, oh. And so I've been collaborating not only with music, but with books too, with those poets too. I think that we all have something in common and this is why we have come together. Um, I was an artist. I, I worked in uh, watercolors and, and uh, acrylic paint and some oil. Um, and also, you know, I played piano when I was young. I played some piano. And I, I taught myself guitar as a teenager. So I think th all these things are combined. All these different types of art um, that, 
they come they they come together and that's why we're attracted to connect with each other i think yeah it's it's different dimensions you know the the picture the art is in one dimension the sound is another dimension the word it's another dimension and, and I said, well, why they are not together? Why well, they're not working together? And 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 since the film, the film, I have about 250 video films in the on YouTube, for example. Uh, if you look at Irrealist Art Edition, so you find YouTube, you find all those videos too. And, and I was said, ah, it took about 30 years for me to combine all those because I separated the music at the beginning. I play music, and then I make my painting and my and and also my designs. Uh, I told you, I, I designed children playground, for example. Now it's a book about children playground. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I've been working. I can. Sh I don't. I don't know if you see well. Yes, I can see. Yeah. How interesting. Yeah. So it's design, art, and and that's that's. My, 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 my main uh, uh, interest is yeah, I, I, I combine everything, uh, mix ratatouille, like I said before, um, of, of design, because I want children to be uh, aware about design, about art, about forms, about colors, about... Um, I, I, want they want, I want them to, 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 to think about it. And as well for the poetry, I think there is not... A, not so many young people who are interesting or poetry. So I thought maybe if you make videos and you make um, uh, films and, and music and everything, maybe it will be more a popu 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 uh, popular art, uh, more mm -hmm. open to a uh, broader public, like just young children and uh, younger, younger people. Uh, yeah. And, and I see the difference between the music and the poetry. Uh, what I like in the poetry is uh, the, the, the melody of the poetry, the rhythm of the poetry. Uh, I follow the poetry. I don't do the, I don't do the, the opposite. Mm -hmm. Like music, like popular music. First, they make music that he has a beat, and then they try to find words who follow the beat. But here I do the, the, the opposite. I follow the rhythm of the poetry, and I think this this kind of uh, experimental work uh, there is not so many people who have done it. Yeah, it might be a new genre or something like this. Mm -hmm. And but it took time for me, <laughs> but thirty years to discover this. <laughs> I have to mention something about uh, something that I heard uh, with your music, where your dog was singing. Yeah. <laughs> in the video. Yes, or your or me. I I did some music with. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I have a group uh, who's called uh, Paris Zoo Motion on Bandcamp, huh? and now where I use several animals: like elephant, tigers, uh, goats, uh, goats, birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been recording different animals and I've been photographing them and filming them at the zoo or at the big natural park and everything because I was looking for, a, first I was looking for a singer or mm -hmm. an opera singer or a gospel singer. I want somebody to sing in. And no one, nobody, nobody wanted to sing on my strange music, you know, they want to have a, a, a kind of classical uh, background here. And it's okay, but I, I use animal instead. instead. And, uh, and, and how do I mean the the animal sounds? They they fit with the music? No, I, I trick it a little bit. I cut it when I want it. I put it when I so I, I trick it a little bit there over there because uh, they didn't listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then I discover the poets and I say, wow, that's what I want. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, maybe there is a melody in the in the poetry, but it's not pop music, you know. And uh, mm -hmm. 
and I'm very pleased that those poets, they understood what my meaning and they collaborated very well with me. I think so too. I just wish I have a better um, possibilities, better microphone, better equipment, uh, better, better sound engineer, better everything, you know. But I, what I did is I did with, with you know, you can, you can make a drawing with charcoal, you find it on the fire. So uh, yeah. it can still be good. I, I think uh, all artists, we wish we had better equipment <laughs> yeah. to work with, but um, no matter what we have, we do find a way. We do find a way. Yeah, especially nowadays with all those techn technological uh, help so we can get. So it helps a lot also. And um, But I told you as a musician, I've been working with many, many, many musicians. For example, Gerald Parkowell, for example, which was one of the best be contrabass players in the United States uh, for, for three years ago, or something like that. Huh? Very engaged, very professional. Uh, I've been working with uh, uh, a musician like Santiago Jimenez uh, from the, the group uh, Munta from India, too, uh, who play violin and very extremely very good piano. And we're going to have uh, also uh, a new album uh, in, a para in, in some two or three weeks, I think it will come the album with Zoran and, and Santiago. Uh, I've been working with his brother, also a very good player. He was at, at the events uh, that we organized uh, when the Beat Poet uh, Festival was in Stockholm too. Uh, he played the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've been playing with very good jazz guitarists and they have been inviting here and play with the, in my albums or with the poets. So I have about 30, 20, 30 different musicians I've been collaborating with. Mm. In, in the constellation I, I, I created, it's called Unique Sex. And I don't know how you say it, Unique Six or Unique Sex, how you, can, you could, should say it. I think it's... Uh, number six. Number three, six. Three, six. Yeah. But I like, I, I say unique sex. For that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it, it, it gives more a, a broader uh, understanding mm. about uh, the mix and uh, the sex have no, nothing to do with that. But um, uh, I've been very pleased to, to, to collaborate with those great composers and musicians. Um, I'm surprised myself that they are curious about what I've done, uh, how I work, and uh, and then he come a uh, production and an edition. Mm -hmm. And uh, Unisex, Sex, uh, it's I, I'm the founder of Unisex Sex since uh, oh, um, about 15 years, uh, 10, 15 years ago. I don't remember exactly. And it stands for Electroacoustic Universal Art Music. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know, I, I can't pronounce all these no. <laughs> names. No, but, it's um, a long story. It's a long name. We, maybe they say that I talk too much, I write too much, I play too much. Uh, in Sweden, we said lagom. It's, it's a word I don't like very much, this word, lagom. Lagom means exactly in the middle. I don't like exactly in the middle. I like very strong, very bad, but it has to be extreme. And then you can find somewhere to, to go from, from the mm -hmm. good to the bad. And even noise, I like noise, for example, of, um, of uh, uh, motorway, for example, or uh, more noise of machines or uh, different kind. And I use it, I use it mm -hmm. in my music. Uh, uh, you really are an innovator, I think. Uh, so yeah. I <laughs> all history of jazz there. No, that's right. Mm. There is jazz. There is a lot of jazz in my music, but I destroy it somehow. And mm. I don't mean destroy it to, to hurt it. I destroy it because I cut it in pieces and I, and I try to, 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 to make it grow a different mm. way. And well, I, I think we're similar in that way. Um, I'm taking the original beat poetry movement and I'm trying to evolve it into something uh, new. Yeah. 
Yeah, I saw it a bit new, new bit generation, or you wrote somewhere. And I but I mean, we we keep evolving. Yeah, we keep evolving. I remember my grandfather uh, when I was ten years. He said, "Oh, Frederick, you you have to listen to the Beat Poet." When I was ten years, it's uh, over uh, f- <coughs> nearly fifty years ago. He said, "You have to listen to the Beat Poet," and I said, "Okay, I listen to the Beat Poet." <laughs> And uh, it was Bob Dylan, Leona Cohen, or uh, those, those guys. Uh, and, and I was surprised. It's just now I realized how very important it was for me that mm-hmm. my grandfather told me that uh, yeah. already. So I was there. I was there already. <laughs> my my, my, my uh, parents told me to keep away from the beat poets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe See, I, I'm I'm trying to change the image that was portrayed, you know, to to describe the beat poets from the past. They were not bad people. They were just misunderstood because they were so far ahead yeah. in their time. You know, uh, people didn't understand them. I think you know. No, it's free. There are free people, free people, free talking, free speech. And of course, we have to talk about everything. You know, it's not you have to do exactly like everybody does. The opposite. You have to say what is good, what is wrong, what is uh, what can help, what can uh, make things change. And every every uh, expression has uh, its meaning also. So... Uh, so when, when I when I meet both Bent and Chris Vanoy and Paul Richmond and the other poet, I said, "Wow, I found somebody who has the guts to say really <laughs> what they have in their heart, what they have in their brain, what they have in their soul, and there is no hiding, no no yeah. no, no no playing, no. It's like art when you make decorative art, you playing, you you try to make something decorative, uh, but when, when you make real, real art, so it's it's authentic Mm -hmm. and nobody said it's wrong because it's authentic it's wrong for the person who's done it yeah and it's right for this person who's done it not wrong (laughs) but uh, so have have you had any formal uh, musical training or did you just train yourself to play different instruments in fact, I begin I begin to play music before I was painting, and uh, because there is many girls, I was thinking I was very cute playing guitar. <laughs> so uh, he gave a little bit of, <laughs> of punch there, and and then uh, I even play uh, guitar in the street, in the underground, in Paris, and everything. But then when I, I get in the um, the art. Then I took it very seriously. For me, music was more like a hobby, and art was something very, very, very serious for me. Um, and it has been like this about forty years. But then, uh, those, but parallel, I've been doing music. In fact, I did music for when I was painting. I want to listen to music that uh, give me inspiration. So I create music, then I could paint. Because at this time, we, we didn't have uh, internet or things like that. So it was only the radio. And the radio yeah. it was only, I love you, baby, I love you, baby. Or there is a advertisement, publicity in the radio. So you, you didn't, it was, your inspiration was cut, you know. Uh, every time uh, they put wrong music, they put wrong adver- adver- advertisement and everything. Also, I said, okay. I make my long piece music. Many of my, my, my piece of music are five, eight, ten minutes, you know, a very long one. Because I want to, to get in the in the flow, in the mood. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I could do it. And then came those but, So you don't cut anything short uh, or you don't rush through projects. You want to, whatever it takes, right? You want to create. I, I go even further than that. Uh, I, I use as I, I used to say to all my uh, collaborators, I say only one take. You play only one. You don't have any more choice. You play only one, only one. 
uh, one one because the first impression, the first feeling, the first uh, expression that this is authentic all. Then mm -hmm. when you, you try to make something of it, then it's getting more uh, calculation. Yeah. Uh, so I it, tell them only one take and there was peace. They did it and then it was enough. That one take and and then I cut it if there is if they're coughing or something like this or mm -hmm. they did it wrong. So I I fix it somehow, so I take it away those parts which are not very. Um, even I, even I, if they are coughing, even I repeating the coughing several times, and I use it like an echo, or I use it like a, a part of the of the music too. So I can use even old mistake. I can use it and and, and put some delay and repeating them, and then it getting in the rhythm, and then it works. But I'm, I've been studying art school in South of... Uh, first, I started in art school in... To come to your first question about if I'm school in the mm -hmm. music. Uh, first, I studied in Besançon, in Eastern France. Uh, uh, I, I did not even finish uh, high school. And I came direct at the high, high, uh, university directly. Uh, at this time, you could do that. that. Uh, you didn't finish high school, but then there was 5,000 pupils want to go to art school, and they take only 100. And I get, I was one of the 100. So mm -hmm. I began in Besançon, Eastern France, and then some, some, some months later, I, I moved to South of France, in Perpignan, where I, I've been studying the rest of the, the studies. And then I came to Sweden after uh, I've been a couple of years in Paris. I'm born in Paris too, so I knew Paris too. Uh, I came in hiking 1986 in yeah. January, January, hitchhiking, mm -hmm. uh, 1986, uh, from uh, south of France to Stockholm. It was minus 20 degrees. What? <laughs> I did not have hands car, I did not have a hat, I did not have anything. I thought I, I, I be, I'm, I'm going to froze over there at the, at the motorway. Mm. I came through and since then I've been living here. I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you don't know why you, you don't know why you go there, but you have to. <laughs> And it's a bit like this with the poet. You don't know what you do, where you go, but you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would uh, tell, you know, upcoming artists, if you had some advice to give them, what would you say to them? Uh, uh, I have many things I could say. I wanted to say something, very, very bad words, but... Uh, uh, don't care about the fashion, don't care about uh, popular, don't care about anything, just care about what is honest with you and what is right with you and what is, that's is the, the most, and then you'll be better with time and training and working, uh, so you'll get better. So, uh, but don't try to do something like somebody else has done already, because this is, uh, I don't know. I think that's what's important about you and what you're doing is that it's um, there's so many there's so many artists that they copy um, they're not original at all no I don't know if it's because of they're afraid to um, to not be accepted if they don't do the same thing that someone that was, um, you know, popular did. I think that it has something to do with it. They want to be accepted, so they they follow the same path. Yeah. But um, then you have a whole bunch of artists that you can't even recognize the differences no. in them. No. You know, you hear music; it all sounds the same. Exactly. Uh, it becomes boring. I think you know. Yeah, I was thinking about rap music or uh, the new uh, the new rap sides. They are very, some some are very nice words, I think. Some 
some rappers there, they are very good, talented poets, but they do the same music like everybody's done. So they're getting lost, all the text getting lost in the way. And uh, I, I've never done this before. Um, I always be true to myself. And uh, even when I was teaching design at the Royal Academy of Technology in Stockholm during five years, all the designers was copying other designers. Uh, Ikea and uh, popular. So, uh, we, so, wow, what did you find? In, well, uh, how you, what is your impression? I so, said, uh, I was looking at Ikea. But I said, you don't do that. Do your own mm -hmm. stuff. Don't copy yeah. nobody. Mm -hmm. You can be inspired of a, a great, talented musician, but don't copy it. Uh, that's... But I don't know, maybe one day uh, there will be somebody who, who, who will uh, value at, uh, to, be, to be, uh, your, have your own expression style uh, of expression technique. Uh, it will be va valuable for, for, for some, not popular music, mm. uh, not common music, no. I think that that's a very good point. Um, is that we are all influenced by these other people yeah. that have become famous, but we have to find our own voice and express ourselves. Um, yeah, exactly. And, uh, but you have to be aware that many people follow these, these fashionable things, you know, so 90%, I mean, I mean how many people are interesting about poetry? Uh, how many people are interesting about art? Uh, mm. Yeah, uh, or, or experimental music. So it's a very, very little group of people, but those people, they can make revolution. They can create revolution, really. They can, they are some, some corn in the machinery, and I think it needs, <laughs> yeah to stop some bad uh, rolling, uh, rolling stones. <laughs> mm -hmm. So before we go, is there anything else you want to talk about? Uh, I think uh, I want to thank you, by Chris Van Oyl for his marvelous poetry book. Uh, and uh, Paul Richmond. Mm. Denis Renfors, Bengto Björklund, and uh, Igor Golkan Golkan is somewhere here. His books of Igor Golkan. Golkan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm looking forward to give out this new rec uh, LP um, uh, with Rich Ferguson and the other album with uh, Santiago Jimenez, Zoran, or uh, Gregory West. Uh, uh, they are coming so in a couple of weeks. Uh, so um, yeah, I'm pleased to be part of your of your project, and uh, I support you thousand percent. Thank you, and um, it was very nice talking with you today. And um, I think people watching uh, this video, they will they will. Uh, they, some might seek you out and want to work with you because they should. I think you're very interesting and you are an innovator. Uh, you really are. Yeah. And that's important. Uh, it's very important, yeah. I, I, especially I, in art. Yeah, I was thinking about when we're talking about design, about introducing poetry in urban urban uh, environment, for example. Uh, as well that I want to have a music instrument in the children's playground. I want poetry in all the street, in all the building. I want. Uh, we we have to take the the place of all mm -hmm. this publicity. Even in uh, in Facebook and other things, instead of putting publicity, they should put uh, poetry or uh, whatever. So yeah. Educating people mm -hmm. this way. 
and uh, I'm proud you you understand my words, uh, Debbie, and uh, and the other poets. I'm very very proud of that too. Well, thank you. And um, if you want to give your website uh, info again, so yeah. people can get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, www.iriarte, I-R-I-A-R-T-E, dot info. <laughs> did, did I say well? <laughs> yes. No, no, pro pronounce well. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. And um, we'll see you at the festival. Yeah. We'll see okay. you at the so festival. <laughs> It's the National Beat Poetry Foundation YouTube channel that this will be aired on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. What is B? What is B? He asked me what, what B was, so I told him. What is B? B is not a what. B is a bit. What is B? It's jazz blue. What is crying B? out on a night of booty stars over a city that never sleeps? What is B? The struggle of hard bones B? and empty bottles. What is, what is B? B? It's dreams less what sleeping by the click clack railroad what tracks of dreams. Waking on the beach with the taste of last night's drunk still in your mouth. Cool, cool, cool. It's calling out your lover's name so loud.